This week, Dr. Brad McEwen, nutritional expert, naturopath, herbalist, educator, researcher, mentor with over 19 years clinical experience, talks about the big four, tiredness, weakness, fatigue, and stress. Enjoy this one. Welcome to the Body Science Podcast, bringing you everything you need, want, and should know about health, fitness, nutrition, and training. As always, the information contained in this podcast is for the information purposes only and is not designed to diagnose or be prescriptive to treat, prevent, or manage any injury, disease, or other health-related condition. <laughs> Today's podcast is brought to you by Hydroxyburn Clinical, the powerful brain-boosting cortisol-reducing thermogenic formula formulated to optimize your day, improve productivity, assist weight management, and combat the negative effects of daily stress. Hydroxybone Clinical contains a clinically trialed dose of Vuness, an innovative extract that comes from a special type of lemon balm grown only in Bavaria, Germany, and proven by in vitro studies, human studies, and phytochemical investigations to have positive effects in less than an hour. Hydroxybone Clinical is your key to reduced cortisol and stress levels, mental focus and cognitive function, high performance memory, activating your metabolism. What does this mean? If cortisol is reduced, the metabolism is activated to burn fat, which supports the formula's thermogenic effect. Two tablets every morning after food to boost more than your mood in as little as one hour. Welcome to the Body Science Podcast, where everything's about being fit, happy, and healthy. Today, it's exciting. We're going to talk about the big four, tiredness, weakness, fatigue, and stress. And with me is Dr. Brad McEwen, nutrition expert, naturopath, herbalist, educator, researcher, and mentor of many people in the clinical area of health science. Thank you. Brad, welcome aboard. Thank you. The big four, mate. The big four. And what's exciting about this, we talk about, you know, stress, weakness, fatigue. And one of the main things everyone has in their life is stress. Mm. You know, and stress has been around since the dawn of time. So it may have been the saber-toothed tiger or the woolly mammoth, you know, <laughs> chasing us out of our cave. The famous <laughs> the saber-toothed tiger. Saber-toothed tiger, you know. And keeping that in mind, it's that extra stress. Um, other impact, of course, is you know, work, life, all these elements as well. So we can joke about the saber-toothed tiger, but that saber-toothed tiger of today may be your boss. Credit card bill. Credit card bill. It's your, you know, your house. It's your livelihood kind yeah. of stuff. So it's just changed shape. And these days, of course, stress is a lot more mental and emotional compared to the physical stress of a couple of generations ago. You're out on the farm doing everything out there sort of early in the morning to late in the afternoon now we're a lot more in the office. Like for example, a lot of my work's now in the office. So for me, it's a lot more sort of mental work. And it, yeah, the big four, it's, it's massive and stress is driving all of those factors. Yeah, we live in a digital society where every second is communicatable. Like I remember as a kid getting in the park and going for a bike ride. No one knew where I was for two hours. No one overly stressed about that because they knew I was coming back. Now it's Oh, where are they? Where's the phone? Where's That's this? It. Where's that? And what messages come on? It's perfect. And when the street lights came on, it was like time to go yeah, home. Go like home you or... knew that was your signal. Yeah. That that's... was the bat signal to get home. I know. Well, well, these days it's like just sitting here now, I've had two messages come through in my mm. pocket from my phone. It's like we're on this 24 hour digital scope. Yeah. And that's causing stress is sleeplessness and tiredness, weakness, fatigue, and stress is just driving all of that. And people are coming into you over and over again, or I mean, you're doing a lot of lecturing now, so you're talking to a lot of people. And it is tiredness, weakness, fatigue, and stress are the big four things that you are being tied up with these days. That's right. So with part of my work, a lot more of my focus now is education and research, and also teaching a lot of the practitioners yes. of the future and supervising clinics and, and mentoring as well. So they are saying to me, this is what we're also seeing. It's very broad spectrum stress. And what stress, sorry, well, what stress for me is different for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, if I had to get up in front of a group of people and talk, I'd be very stressed. So my fight or flight, I could be on the flight side of that one. That's it. So let, let's talk about, I mean, you're here to talk about ingredients and products and stuff. Let's talk about somebody comes to you and they've used this order, tiredness, weakness, fatigue, and stress, because mm -hmm. people normally leave the big one to last. That's right. So... What type of questions are you going to ask people? What type of things are you going to talk to people about? Like, where are we at with this in, in your world? Um, where are we at? And, and the interesting thing is this, we need to know more. Mm -hmm. So I, I always ask the question, tell me more about your stress. Yep. Tiredness, weakness, fatigue. Tell me more about it. And this could be from a practitioner level, retail level. Yep. You know, you can just simply ask the question, tell me more about how you feel. Yes. And tell me more about your stress. 
and they'll give you their story. Mm-hmm. And their story is they're at work, deadlines, et cetera, et cetera. And you can then start thinking about what kind of herbal new medicines and nutrients and formulations that we need to go for to help this person get through that stress point. Because mm-hmm. herbal medicine is sort of leading the way and, and people are a lot more educated with Google, et cetera, and, Dr. and what Google. they should do. Dr. Google's a legend. So herbal medicine is leading the way when it comes to day-to-day people looking at stress. So when I say herbal medicine, I'm also talking about vitamins, minerals. I mean, that's yeah. your, your, these are your areas of expertise. What should I be looking for in a formula? Let's just ask that question straight up. So what we're looking for is key ingredients. Mm-hmm. So we, we look at a formula, always look at the label mm-hmm. and see is this able, you know, easy to read. Yep. Can you read the label? Is it understandable? Are the dosages easy to read? Is there information on there saying what it does? Okay. And something else I always look for, and I'm a big sticker for this, if it's a therapeutic formula, and is it a listed medicine? Because we need to look at quality. We need to look at safety. And in some cases, we might say efficacy Mm -hmm. because it's been tested, like for stability as well over time. And I'm looking at particular ingredients. Okay. And what are you looking for? Have you brought it up? Oh, I did. (laughs) So what what I'm looking for is a combination of herbal medicines and nutrients that, you know, regulate these stress pathways. Okay. So one one of the technical words we use is called a nervine. 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 And what that is, it's a very old term Mm -hmm. for like working on the nervous system, nourishing the nervous system, balancing it out. Okay. So it's effectively restoring it to its best capabilities. And a very good herb for that, of course, is lemon balm. Yes. It's a very, I'm going to use the word beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful herb. It's very calming, relaxing, while also maintaining focus as well. So it's not going to sort of take you down that step. It's going to allow you to do your day-to-day activity Mm -hmm. without feeling that same stress level. Okay. That's very good calmative. And and there's a fair bit of research out on lemon balm at the moment. I mean, we we use a a brand called Blueness from a little province in Germany. Um, Do you want to talk about lemon balm? Yeah. So uh, lemon balm has been used for a very long time. So Mm -hmm. we call it a traditional herbal medicine. Mm -hmm. So it's been used for many, many centuries. And in recent times, of course, we've got the sort of evidence-based medicine. We've got the more advent of research as well going into this. And blueness is one of these types of um, lemon balm. Yep. And there's a lot more research coming about sort of showing the, um, the quality of the formula, mm-hmm. as in like the quality of lemon balm, and its effects on different stress markers. And some of these ones people might know about as well. Mm-hmm. So we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. But the thing about lemon balm is it's usable in a wide range of applications, like what I was saying. It can calm you and relax you, but without knocking you down that step. Okay. So you were talking in a previous podcast last week, and I encourage everyone to go back and listen to it if they haven't. You're talking about caffeine having a calming effect as well. So why would you, why would you have a caffeine based product with a lemon balm based product in herbal medicine? Like where are we at here? And, and that's, the, that's the thing that's hard to understand sometimes with people. Like they think you've got a stimulant effect with yep. the caffeine and whether it's caffeine or green tea grana yep, kind of caffeine exactly, yep. versus lemon balm, which is that calmative effect that I was just saying, that nervine effect. The way how the body works is it takes what it's given. And if you look at good quality stuff, it's going to give you that mental stimulation, mm-hmm. that, again, adaptability to stress. Yes, increases the energetic pathways and by doing that it sounds it's an interesting way of thinking about it, it opens up the circulation and the sort of the nervous system effect the conduction of the nerve yeah and that i would allow in some cases the blueness or the lemon balm to work more effectively okay so it's like a synergistic effect yep. i have people taking all different supplements at various times and there's no way you take it normally at that time of day because it's going to keep you awake or it's going to make you feel calm during yep. the middle of the day yeah but it has that balancing effect. Okay. And that's what we're looking like for. focus. It's focus. Yeah. It's a balancing effect. And if we look at the combination, like with lemon balm, grana, green tea, fern, some B vitamins as well, you're going to get that synergistic effect. Mm-hmm. And that's something I always look for in a formula. I look at the combination of the nutrients, the combination of the herbs in there, and how well they interplay. Okay. So I'm just going to take the time to talk to you about our product, Hydroxyburn Clinical. Let's. When we first brought this product to market, it was all about why why can't people lose weight? 
we already had a thermogenic in the market. Like, let, what you don't bring another one out when you've got one. So what's and I mean, obviously, the last one was is based on acetyl carnitine and fat utilization, etc. So we looked at the other side, and, and we searched for a long time to find the right ingredient with the right research, and that's where the blueness group, came, the, the the people who'd researched blueness came into play with what they, some of their claims were around cortisol, stress management, memory recall, that type of thing, and working with other people in the industry, and we put this formula together. We thought, wow, cortisol blocker with a thermo. I haven't seen that before. That's right. So it's very unique. And uh, a lot of people haven't really wrapped their arms around it, to be honest, because it's something they don't understand. Are we able to talk about that now? I mean, yeah, we're we talking can. about my product and that's not why I brought you on to. No, it's fun. But so it, it sounds quite contradictory. It does, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's like, how does it work? Mm. Like th that's the kind of vibe, like you have that pause yep. and it's like, I don't understand why it's this way. It's like a, so to say, an upper and downer in one. Yep. You know, you've got your stamina and endurance and your cognitive effect in one. Doesn't that knock each other out? And the answer is, in this combination, not so. Because mm -hmm. we're looking at the, it's the combination effect, the synergistic value. So when we look at it, you've got the general stamina endurance of the grana, caffeine, the green tea. And green tea is a very good antioxidant, yep. anti-inflammatory. So it's very good on the nervous system as well. And you combine that with the lemon balm effect. So it's allowed you, you to sort of get that focus, drive, without that kind of overstimulation. Yeah, jitters. The jitters. Mm. And what something we are talking about earlier is that ebb and flow of the day. Yeah, well, see, talking about hydroxyphen clinical again, we, we tell people to take it at 9 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So you get up in the morning, cortisol's high or we don't get up. It's my understanding. I'm not a cortisol expert. You are. So most people are dropping a pre-workout or a, a shred or a thermo at that time in the morning. So they're going and training and training hard. That's having breakfast, a cup of coffee probably with breakfast. So we've had two caffeine hits already early in the morning. I'm talking about the fitness industry. So maybe not your traditional That's right. um, market. So we're telling people to take another product at nine o'clock in the morning that will calm you down, but gives you energy. So I think this is where this product has a lot of people have gone, I don't really get how it works. Mm. But what we're trying to do here, when we bought this out, we were, we were looking at cortisol and weight loss. Like that's the big thing with this product. But we were looking at how people felt mentally through the day based on what they're doing in their life. And you get to work and unless you're employed by somebody of the greatest scope ever, you have stress. Mm -hmm. You have deadlines, you have emails, you have timelines. Never ending. You have phone calls, you have meetings, you have messages. And then, you know, you're on Instagram, you see, geez, he's at the beach in <laughs> Bali surfing. And then you get up and you ha make yourself another coffee because you're bored. What are we doing here to ourselves with, with a product like this? Like it's, um, what do you think from a clinical application? And we can step right back to the pre-workout yep. early in the morning. And we're, talk we're talking hours here, like... People are having a pre-workout at four or five in the morning and training, and we're talking about taking clinical at nine. So we're talking five hours and we can it's, talk half-life of products and stuff. Yep. And, but the reality is a lot of people are having a coffee with breakfast as well. So can you explain to somebody um, the theories that I bought to practice with this product because I'm not doing a good job of explaining it? Okay. Well, the way I see it is cortisol is essential for life. Mm -hmm. It's your get up and go. So think of cortisol and adrenaline. Mm -hmm. It's a fight or flight response. You get up and go and you get moving. Yes. With some people though, they're always in the fight or flight response. They're always in it. Always in 24 seven. 24 seven. The body's not recovering effectively. Okay. It's a continuous process. So their ebb and flow, instead of being like this, a nice and gentle ebb and flow, it's up there. Yep. And the peaks and troughs are not that much different. And when they have an extra stress, like you got to get this done by such and such, like, an extra stress on top, it doesn't allow them that recovery period to actually step up the next point. Yeah. But if you maintain the cortisol levels and the stress levels and bring it back down to, a, let's say, a more natural level, you're able to take on that extra stress, do all the process, like that extra article or that extra, you know, whatever your boss has asked you to do, yeah. or you have to pick up the kids in a rush or something like that, it allows you to do that more effectively. So from that synergenic effect you're talking about, you're talking about 
you've got all these external things coming on board, but you can focus and get through what you need to. So you can take the path that enables you to reduce your cortisol versus right. absolutely stressing about every single thing that's dropping on you at that one time. Is, am I off track here in what I'm saying? Or? No, no, you're on track. What we're looking at is balancing it out. Mm -hmm. So in that case, in the hypervigilant state, it's that awareness, the fight or flight, saber tooth tiger, we have to get away. Yeah. But over time, we get into the exhaustion phase. The body just can't keep doing it. Okay. And then that's when we get the exhaustion, tiredness, weak and fatigue, yeah. you know, the, the mega four, four. Yeah. the big four. That's what we're looking at. And then that process is you can't work. You know, you can't work out. You feel tired, weak, fatigue and stress all the time. And you're not living the life that you want. And I won't say it's as simple as cortisol, but it can be as simple as cortisol regulation. It can be as simple as balancing out that flow. And so bringing that back to someone who's training and trying to lose weight and get healthy and live a balanced life, you're not going to burn fat. Am I correct in saying that in that state? That's right. The body goes into this mode of safety. Mm -hmm. It says, I have to protect myself Yes. because I'm not recovering. I'm going to store fat mm -hmm. for later use. So instead of the saber-toothed tiger, you're like a hibernating bear. Yeah. You know, you're storing everything, you're saving it for later because the body's always in this stress state. People don't eat properly. You know, when you're stressed, you eat yep. more chippy chips, carby carbs and that kind of stuff. And by doing that, then stores more. And then that creates more cortisol, which creates more fat tissue, which creates more cortisol. Yeah. And that steamroll, steamroll effect. And you can't get out of it in some cases. Okay. The body wants to because the body wants to maintain its own rhythm, but it can't get out of it. So it goes into that vicious cycle. Okay. So playing with fat loss again, and obviously thermogen most thermogenics have a, a, a caffeine base in them in, in Australia. How much caffeine, and I could be off track here, is too much caffeine for somebody who's in that stressed state? That's a very good question and hard to answer Okay, because it's a very individual one. Mm -hmm. So the way I always ask people is, you know, when you're having a coffee or any caffeine beverage, how do you feel afterwards? I feel great. You feel great. That's a good thing. Now, if someone says, I don't feel great, the caffeine's not doing the work it should be doing. Yeah, got you. And, and that could be, you know, they're not having enough mm -hmm. and the body's drawing it. Yep. Or they're having too much for that person. And that could be as simple as having two coffees as soon as they get up, which is not a good idea, versus actually having a formulated kind of style. Okay. Let's put it into process, that ebb and flow effect. Nine o'clock's a good time. Okay. So when we get up in the morning, you put your feet down like this. Do you know what that does? That you get up and go. Yeah. It actually, that, it sounds funny, but that stamping of the feet like that tells the body you're getting up. It's interesting. Like if you're laying in bed, you're tired. Yeah, exactly. But as soon as you put that feet down, you actually signal to the body that you're up now. You're getting going. It gets the adrenaline, the cortisol, everything's up. Yeah. But just before we wake, we get a cortisol surge. It's like a big dump is what they call it. Yep. The body, it's into the bloodstream because it knows you're going to get up soon because it's your rhythm. Mm -hmm. You get up, stamp your feet down the ground. Not like that, but when you get up, <laughs> I don't do that. Yeah. But when you get up, you start walking around, it's activating all those pathways. It's allowing you to sort of get up and go. Okay. And then you go and have your breakfast or do your workout or whatever process mm -hmm. that you have. That could be, like you said, 4 or 5 a.m. It could be very early. Yep. Or it could be depending on people's time points. And if you have things too close together, don't space it out. You're not going to get the true benefit out of all of it okay so that's why we always say to people you know have your pre-workout do your workout think about recovery yep. and that could be as simple as you know whatever their recovery system is because everyone's yep. different and then think about the nine o'clock time point because that way you're at work or doing whatever you're doing it's good enough time point away from everything and also that ebb and flow of cortisol yes you've been up for a period of time it's allowing the body to work with it and by combining the lemon balm, grana, and green tea, like the good quality caffeines mm -hmm. and a bit of normal caffeine as well to get that stimulatory effect yep. with the blueness, you're sort of getting that really good energetic flow, but with a lot more of the calmness of the mind, the focus, the drive. And people feel really good on lemon balm. Yeah. It's a very nice relaxant, but without numbing you out, yep. if that's if I can say it like that. Makes sense. It won't drop you, it won't make you drowsy mm -hmm. kind of effect. It mm -hmm. won't numb you out. So you can do perfect work 
whether it's workload or work. And one of the things I want you to think about, and we, we mentioned it briefly earlier, is the amount of just general workload we're doing with emails and you know, oh, that's kind of mental work. I want you to think if we all got up today and read a journal article, as I do, yeah, <laughs> being a big you know, nerd, <laughs> um, I love what I do, people. I love it very much. <laughs> So I read journal articles and everything in the morning, or you might read the paper. Mm -hmm. You read your local paper or the national paper. You've just read more words in one newspaper than what someone read in their whole life a number of generations ago. Yeah, absolutely. Good point. Because they did physical work. They're out on the land. So they burnt off their cortisol. Yes. These days we're burning off our cortisol, you know, reading and sitting at the desk and doing our workouts, mm -hmm. but we're not getting that perfect flow. Combining these nutrients and we we're talking about um, earlier before the podcast, like B vitamins and other things as well. What else can yeah, what else can we think of? Um, these help nourish the nervous system. And that's important. The nerves. It's very important. And lemon balm does it on its own. Okay. But if we provide nutrients and B two is a bit of an unsung hero in this thing, it allows the nerve conduction to work more effectively. It calms the system down at the same time. Works on the energetic pathways. It's an antioxidant detoxifier. I could go on for the next, I don't know how, I don't know how much time you've got. <laughs> but the thing is, it's a bit of an unsung hero. You don't see it in a lot of products. You don't. Oh, if you do see it, it's in a multivitamin because it's got everything in yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's A to Z, as they say. Mm. In this case here, you know, it's been combined with its friends because okay. B vitamins work well with each other. Yep. So it's been combined with the ones it works well with. Mm -hmm. So there's that synergy factor I like to look at when I'm looking at a formula, yep. how these things work well together. And combining that with a bit of chromium. Iodine just to kickstart sort of thyroid metabolism and just general metabolism overall. And then adding in the component of that calmative effect, the focus, the drive. So when people come in and they say, I do feel tired, weak and fatigued and stress is driving it, we're going to work on your energy pathways. We're going to build you up. We're going to nourish you. We're going to strengthen, you know, the mind and body to get you there, but also make it in a calm fashion. Mm -hmm. So that way you can actually focus on your work and not be jittery and nervous doing it. And then at the end of the day, it's like that winding down effect. So you have the energy when you need it and then the winding down effect at the end of the day. So we like to sort of get home and just you know, do our thing. Everyone does something different. It allows you to do that more effectively. Nice. So I love about it. Uh, do you get asked a lot about weight loss in... in Back in the old clinic, clinical days? Yeah, I still do because I do, do consulting with health food stores and pharmacies. Mm -hmm. And it's it's interesting, like with the stress response, like like I, it's right now I can see it in my mind, you've got this sort of ebb and flow. Yeah. And the cortisol effect is again storing all the fats. Mm -hmm. And if we're not maintaining stress levels or reducing it, the body keeps storing it. Yeah. And we do need that thermogenic effect to build up the energy pathways, but also that calmness of it as well. Yeah. It's interesting. We've got a couple of case studies of people that couldn't lose weight, like trained methodically, had um, the PT, had a great diet. But and I'm talking probably more 45 year old women plus when I'm when I'm making this comment. We've had quite a few. We've had a lot of that new young female coming back to us, going, "I've lost weight for the first time ever. Mm. Now, I haven't changed anything. I've just taken your tablets, and I'm not saying swallow a tablet and lose weight. I don't want to push that." At anyone, I mean, it is a, a whole package of a PT and getting your diet right and everything right. Why would and because I, I like bringing case studies in. Perfect. Why would this forty-five-year-old female have success with a product that we bought out to look at cortisol and look at a thermogenic effect and 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 provide and everyone likes a little pep of energy occasionally in that in the, in the formulation concept? Why would she have done so well out of that product? And this is a very good question. Because she had question. the big four. She had the big and four. And she was working hard too. Like the training, you know, you, you looked at the, if you looked at the program from an outside, you say you should be losing weight or you should be getting fitter or, you know. So she's working with the big four. Mm -hmm. That's sort of pulling it down, that, that result. Yeah. Once women hit that sort of perimenopausal, 45 to 55, hormone levels change. Mm -hmm. And we won't go into too much detail because that's an hour or two's worth. Yep. But the idea is... The balance of estrogen, progesterone, testosterone changes. Okay. And of course, we need testosterone male and female yep. to regulate muscle mass, fat mass, bone mass. Yep. In regards to that, that level changes up a little bit because the estrogen levels change 
down. Okay. When we need to rebalance that out, cortisol is blocking it in a way. Okay. It's not allowing it. Estrogen is stored in the adipose tissue or the fat tissue, mm -hmm. as well as other hormones and cortisol, adrenaline. So a lot of these factors are there. So when you, you lose a little bit of weight, people feel good. When you lose too much weight too quick, some people don't feel as good because you're pretty much dumping it out yep. too, too effectively in some cases. And that's when you need the support of supplements and increasing your water and good diet and everything else like that, good sleep. In this case here, you can have two identical people with the same kind of story one will get a great result and one not so. Mm -hmm. This is without supplements yep. because of that cortisol driving effect. Okay. She's under stress and for whatever reason, and it's storing the fat for later. Just going back to what we're thinking of earlier, what mm -hmm. we're saying. Storing the fat to later. If we have something that can balance out the cortisol levels, work on the nervine effect, the stress levels, bringing that down, it allows the body now to actually start burning off that fat. Okay. as a fuel and you can combine it with other things you know like we talked previously about acetylcarnitine mm -hmm. you know, as a contingent nutrient you can add that in yep. as an extra one to help that fat burning effect okay and that will work really well with this combination because you're working on the stress the calming the nerve regulation okay nice nice that's really interesting i just want to drop back to about five minutes ago you talked about caffeine and i mean caffeine's a big top it's a it's got Megatopic. Some people, oh, I'm doing a detox. Oh, what are you doing? I'm getting off caffeine. Oh, is that a detox? Is it like the word detox itself? We'll talk about that one later. But so you mentioned that people could have be having not enough of caffeine or yeah. having too much caffeine, and both of those are causing cortisol. Like if so, you know, if I'm rushing out to get jump on a plane and I miss a coffee and I miss all that, I'm starting to go, "Whoa, where's my morning coffee? My cortisol is going through the roof." That's right. Yeah. And you're I rushing that, as well. Yeah. I have that coffee in the morning and that puts my cortisol through the roof. So where are, can we just talk about caffeine and cortisol? We can. Okay. So caffeine is something that's in a lot of places that we don't know. Mm. So it's in a little bit of chocolate as well. Yep. Damn it. Yeah. Um, I love my chocolate. So it's in a bit of chocolate depending on which kind of chocolate that you get. It's in a wide range of different foods. It's naturally found in grana and green tea and yep. other molecules, um, herbs as well, I should say, not molecules. Um, it's naturally present. It's been part of our diet for thousands of years, effectively. Mm -hmm. And if you look back to ancient cultures, they had the kola nut. They'd pick it off the tree, either just leave it in their mouth and chew on it, like suck on it. So they were getting their caffeine boost. Mm -hmm. So it's been a long-term thing. Yep. And then you've got the different coffee, etc., that have been around. We've always looked for that stimulation in, in our life. You might as well say to keep us up and going. Yep. And with some people, it could be due to their detoxification, to think of that word there. It could be due to their liver function, their circulation. So how do we know this? We ask questions. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel when you don't have a coffee? How do you feel when you do have a coffee? Um, any other health issues mm -hmm. as well, because it could be liver. Um, what's interesting with the detoxification point is the body is doing that 24-7 already. Yeah, it's pretty smart, the body. The, it's so smart. We're still learning about it. Yeah, yeah, we're still finding out new things. It's it's so smart. The body's detoxifying right now as we're sitting here, but sometimes it has trouble mm -hmm. and it needs extra nutrients. It could be blood B two, B six, etc. Yep. To upregulate the phase two, they call it phase two detoxification, and looking at green tea and other elements as well. So we can actually have a detoxification effect by using green tea as a positive, even though it has caffeine in it. Yeah. It's a positive effect. Nice. So that's what I was alluding to earlier. I'm so a you can have fan it, of green tea. Green tea is great. And you can have it in um, tablet form, powder form, or as a good green tea at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's good for you, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant. So a lot of good research and long-term studies. Cardiovascular health, cardiometabolic health, one okay. of my favorite areas to look at. Yeah. So there's quite a lot of areas. Interesting, interesting. So just wrapping up in relation to... Hydroxyburn Clinical, because, you know, I've thrown that in there. We're going to talk yeah. about that now. Perfect. How would you like to see someone supplement with that product and what would you like them to be thinking before they started running out and buying a whole lot of tablets in relation to 
perfect. The so big four. The big four. <laughs> and, and, and that's where I'm, I'm thinking, the perfect big four. If we can rebalance it out. So people walk into health food stores, yep. clinics, et cetera, saying, I've got the big four, not yep. those words. Yep. But it's like, what can you do to help me? Mm-hmm. That's, their, well, that's what they're saying to you. What yep. can you do to help me? You ask the questions about their stress, tiredness, weakness, fatigue, and hydroxyburn clinical covers those areas mm-hmm. quite effectively. You've got the B vitamins in there, nourishing the nerves, energetic pathways, detoxification, yep. anti-inflammatory, muscle health. I can go on for ages with the B vitamins. Yep. And we do need them every day because we burn them up pretty quickly. Okay. So we do need them. And, and you can get them in leafy greens, nuts and seeds and all that. Mm-hmm. But sometimes we need that a little bit more. Okay. So it's a perfect way of doing it. Chromium is found in a lot of foods, but in very small amounts. Yes. And as soon as we start eating a little bit of sugar, the chromium gets used up very quickly and actually gets excreted faster. Okay. So we need to replenish it. And what you'll find when people are stressed, fatigued, etc., they go for the sugar. Yeah. They go for the sweets, the carbs, they get into it and they feel much better afterwards because they get that cortisol hit from it because you just gave the body what it wanted, yes, not what it needed, mm-hmm. what it wanted. And by doing that, you're given the artificial high of the carbohydrate, but then you're flushed out effectively the nutrients that are needed to okay. metabolize that. So it's quite a stressful yeah. event on the body. And by maintaining it with you know, the blueness, lemon balm, Balancing out the ne- the stress levels, the nervous levels, continue on the focus as well. It's a great way of doing it. Nice, very very interesting. We might wrap that up then. That's um that's been very interesting. Like it's been a tablet that we've had in our range for five or six months now. We've had some great success stories on it. It's been a tough one to sell in because people didn't really get it. Um, and hopefully you've uh help solve that little problem. Thank you. And and it is it's it's a formula that is like you said hard to describe but it does so much more. Mm. And that's the thing it does so much more than by just looking at it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that combination effect that synergism. So it's a great formula. Fantastic. Appreciate that. Thanks for thanks for coming on board. We'll uh we've got another one to do with you next next week. Perfect. Looking forward to it. Today's podcast was brought to you by our partners in Fit, Happy and Healthy, ASN, Nutrition Warehouse, DY Discount Vitamins, Fat Burners Only, Evelyn Fay, Mr. Supplement, or find a retailer online at bodyscience.com.au forward slash retailers.